Hey guys, welcome back. Today is the day. My lift is getting delivered. I am super excited. Let's go check it out. I'm waiting. Lukey. Ah. Is my lift here yet? Mm, no. no. Are we waiting for daddy's lift? Yeah. Yeah. Waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm wait. Ooh. Is a truck coming? Is it my truck? Is it my truck? Ah, it looks like it's my truck! Hey guys, welcome back. So, the moment has finally arrived. My lift is here. It just got taken off the truck. Met a really nice guy, actually, who might be related to me. Anyway, that's another story about a hundred-year-old lumber dynasty on the St. Croix River. That's a great, great excuse for a podcast. Anyway, it doesn't matter. My garage lift is right here. So in this video, I'm going to be at least unboxing it. And if I can figure out how to put it together, I'm going to be lifting my 911 just to see how it all works. I've been researching the crap out of it. I've read the user manual back to front, all kind of like 50 pages of it. The good thing about this particular model is that it comes with its own dolly and wheels, so I can move it around the garage. Now, while it's permanent position, or at least 99% of the time, it's gonna be over there in the third stall, underneath my 911. Um, for the sake of this video, at least, I'm gonna unbox it in the middle of the floor so I've got loads of room to work. Um, I'm then gonna figure out how to move it around. And the only car that's in here right now is my, uh, my 911, which is sort of, you know, right next to me here, um, acting as a very expensive GoPro mount. Uh, but, you know, let's take a walk around. Let's see what we've got. Let's get it unboxed. Let's start putting it together. And then uh, hopefully by the end of this uh, video, we'll be uh, getting it up on the lift. One last thing. Luke and Adam have also been waiting with anticipation for this to arrive. So, um, you know, forgive me if they uh, pop in and out of the video as we go. All right, let's go check it out. So here is the lift and here is the, uh, the control station that's been boxed separately. I think I'm gonna open this first. It looks like some of the hydraulic fluid has uh, potentially leaked out because this thing's base has broken. So I can't stand it up. Uh, without it wobbling. So I think I'll get this open first and then I'll move to the lift. Now, right now I've got loads of space in here. So, you know, in an ideal world, if it was just me, the garage and the 911, then potentially this would be mounted somewhere centrally. Um, had I not, you know, put my, um, my ceiling storage up there. So what I have over here in this third bay is a 12 foot ceiling with a jack drive liftmaster um, on the wall, which takes my garage door all the way up to the ceiling. So I've got loads of headroom here. So for the majority of the time, the lift is gonna be positioned in this third bay, and I'm gonna be driving over and over and over as I go in and out. So I suppose that's not ideal, but what's really nice is that I will be able to sort of park it here and hopefully have it up and down while the other two cars are in, in their bays, or maybe I'll take those out, but you know, I will at least be able to use this 99% of the time, regardless of what else is going on in the garage. Uh, now, the only question in my mind is whether or not, well, two questions, whether or not I'm gonna have enough space to operate and to work around this side of the car, probably not. And uh, the company recommends that you have at least one meter of uh, usable space in between the car and anything behind you 
just in case anything fails. But also, you know, practically speaking, I can't do too much work here and my elbow is going to be banging into the wall. So that's one question. Um, having said that, though, even if my car is parked here and I've got it lifted up, I've got space at the back and the front and I've got space on this side. So I could still do an oil change. I could still work on the oil filter. I could still do a coolant flush and I could work on these two wheels. But if I'm going to work on the other two wheels, I'd need to take it down, turn it around, bring it in and uh, lift it up. So that's not ideal for everything. Uh, but well, as I've said before, the great thing about this particular product is that it comes with this dolly and two uh, wheels. These are, you know, really heavy duty kind of tools, which allow me to lift it up and sort of wheel it around anywhere I want to go. Now, I do have to worry about headroom, but even if I was to move the lift over just by a meter or two, I can still comfortably get the car up without hitting the, uh, the, the primary garage door uh, rail and I still have a lot of room to work on the right hand side so you know I think I think that's going to work nicely and and to be perfectly honest when I'm working on the car and I'm getting it up on the lift uh, or even when I'm just using the jack stand and I'm making videos uh, it is nice to have more room and I park my cars out anyway so that's not going to make too much of a difference to me so I'll get the control unit open first and then I'll move to the uh, to the to the lift itself uh, and then we'll take it from there. Oh, the flip-flop mechanic is going to be wearing shoes for this job, just in case. I know a lot of people comment on the fact that I always wear flip-flops in the garage, and it's basically because I'm lazy. <laughs> um, I like just kicking them off when I go in and out of the house, but for this actual job, I am going to be putting on shoes. All right, let's get going. Daddy's talking to the camera now. Hello, everybody. Can you, can you wave? Into the cameras. This is auto amateur Adam. This is auto amateur Luke. You all know Rufy. And this is Rufy's mom. It's a family affair today. All right, boys, are we gonna open up? Well, we gonna, I need to open this one first, is that okay? All right, daddy's gonna get his knife out. Are you gonna come and watch? Just, uh, you, can, you can stand there and watch. Okay. Will you help me take these away? Will you take that one? Thank you. Will you take this one, Adam? Can you go take them over to mommy? Good boys. Take them over there. Good job, boys. Great help. Sure, you can play with that one. Okay. It's okay, bud. <laughs> Hang on. Yeah, you can push the buttons. Okay, now daddy's just gonna sit this on the cardboard just in case it's continuing to leak. Watch your toes. Oh, thank you for the help, Luke. Do you want to help me wipe it down? Yeah. Here are some nice orange wipes. Let's wipe all the oil off it, okay? Like we're scrubbing the counter. <laughs> Thank you. Lukey? Yeah? So, can you tell me what the buttons mean? Um, down, stop, and um, up. I think it's okay. And blink. And blink. What does the red blink sign mean? Um, blink, blink, blink. <laughs> does it mean it's good or does it mean warning? Does it mean bad? Um, in the gas. That's right. Well done. Good job, little auto amateur. Yeah, How about you, Adam? Everything okay. That's right. Green means everything's okay. Yeah. Yeah, dudes. Well, guys, that was slightly hilarious. Luke and Adam helping me take out the console. 
I've had to go in for a couple of hours to sort of distract them away from the lift. As much as it would be fun, them helping me unpack and do this, but doing this and making a video and trying to make sure they're safe, it's just too much. So anyway, back to just one auto amateur, not three auto amateurs. <laughs> So there's the console. It looks like, um, you know, thankfully, as you'd hope, it's in great condition. There was a bit of spillage um, of oil or the hydraulic fluid, I'm guessing, because it was on its side. Not too much. Uh, Luke helped me clean that off, as you saw. Uh, but it's, uh, you know, pretty sturdy, actually, much sturdier than it looked in the, uh, in the video and online. You know, it's like a proper solid piece of equipment. Uh, we've got the up and down and we've got the park. Uh, and then we've got a couple of, you know, good and bad warning signs. I've got a key to open this up, which we'll get to later. But let's continue with the unboxing. Uh, first off, I've got the dolly to remove from the top, which is going to help me move it around. And then I'm just going to slowly work my way around and uh, unbox it. So let's get to it. Okay, guys, this is where it's starting to get interesting. Let's get it unboxed. <clears throat> so, awesome. I'm going to put the wheels, I think, on this side, and that's where the dolly goes. What have we got here? I love that it's red and that it's, uh, it's going to match my floor and the sort of decor in here, you know, because that's the most important thing about getting a lift. Uh, had I got the twin bush system like I'd wanted, uh, it would have gone with my car. So this is a Cavalier lift. It's from China. It's resold through a uh, online retailer called Two Lots or Tool OTS. I think it's called Tool Lots. Uh, they're in California. Uh, retailing, this is about the same price as the twin bush mid-rise lift. It has the same, uh, lift maximum height it has the same sort of uh physical hard enclosed uh, console as opposed to the little hydraulic you know dolly which looks a bit mickey mouse um it's red instead of blue but they retail about the same for like 22 2300 uh i got this one on a sale discounted down to i think it was 16.99 so i managed to save myself quite a bit of money and a lot of people have been uh, asking and guessing that I'd be getting one of the two post or four post lifts that would allow me to stack two cars. And I've got to be honest, that has definitely crossed my mind. And I think that's my longer term strategy for sure. Um, I, am, I am tinkering with the idea of getting a project car, like a, a super cheap beat up uh, 996, you know, for like 10 grand. 12 grand or whatever and just doing it up um, and, and sort of like tweaking it to what I want maybe using that as a track car um, or maybe getting myself a 997 and maybe not a project car maybe a GTS something pretty nice and having that as a second but not this year maybe next year so for now this is what I'm going with and it'll allow me to work on my uh, my 991 as I want to and my friends can come over and they can work on their cars and you know, so I've got this just really for the purpose of doing maintenance on my 991. Longer term plans, you know, a little different in mind, but certainly for now, this is going to keep me happy and keep me interested. And the best thing about these kind of tools is in a year or two's time or less or more, if I want to sell this, I can probably get all my money back. You know, this is, this is something which people are going to want to buy and uh, it's going to look essentially the same. It's easy to clean up. I could definitely get, you know, if not all, a lot of my money back. So that's uh, the strategy there for this. All right, so let's take a look. What have we got? These look like uh, the ramps that go on either side, four of them, I guess. Uh, so I need to hammer these out, put them back on. So that's gonna be pretty cool. I imagine they're the wheels. 
uh, or maybe the hose lines that uh, are gonna connect up to the console. Let's get it undone and see what happens. Now what have we got in here? Oh, awesome. So I wasn't, I wasn't sure if they were gonna come with rubber blocks, but they have. So uh, instead of buying three more hockey pucks to fit on the, uh, the jack points underneath the car, I've got these rubber blocks. Now the question's gonna be whether or not I can get the car on top of the uh, on top of the lift and use these rubber blocks. They might be too big. There might not be enough ground clearance, but we'll see. Let's just lay them on there for now. <clears throat> okay, next up, I'm gonna install the four uh, ramps here and then I'll move on to this is the uh, the sock if you will that I'm gonna put the wiring through which connects the hoses essentially from well I guess there to there so my guess is this is gonna need to go this way around I'll have to check that out as well because um, I think what I'm planning to do is this requires a 120 volt outlet there is a 240 volt outlet version which gets it up, you know, in half the speed. This, I think, has a total lifting time of about 30 seconds or 45 seconds. Um, I went for the 120 because although I've got 240, it's over there. So I'm going to mount this console essentially here directly underneath the power supply. That means the wiring and the, uh, the tubes are probably going to run like this to this corner side of the uh of the ramp which is great because then uh you know there's th there isn't a trip hazard on that side of the garage which i'm most kind of interested or you know concerned about uh so let's put this out of the way for now and then i've got these two big ass wheels i'm gonna go i think which way do they go i think they go this way around underneath yeah now they fit on there and then when I lift it up they drag I think I think that's the way it is I'll have to double check that uh, I imagine this is for the dolly on this side have to figure that out as well and then I've got four little wheels which I'm not sure what they are for, with four uh, little ties. And then this clip here allows me to tighten this sock, which is gonna take the, uh, the wires over to the side of the console there. So we're gonna keep all of this safe for now. Now you guys might notice that I'm limping a little bit. I've been uh, trying to get back on the treadmill and uh, start a little bit of fitness. I've managed to either pull my Achilles tendon or I'm a little stiff. <laughs> I'm really starting to feel my age. So let's do a quick review of where I'm at. Um, so we've got the console unboxed. 
Um, I've got the lift almost completely unboxed. I've managed to uh, successfully attach the ends of uh, each of the ramps. So these four ramps here, um, I think are identical. I don't think there's any difference between you know, one side and the other, but I guess we're gonna find out. The next stage is taking this bad boy off the pallet and getting it flat on the floor uh, and then getting it into a position where I can finish putting it together. So that's gonna be fun. Uh, I've learned that actually I put these uh, wheels on the wrong way around. Uh, I, they need to be like this. So I'm gonna change that quickly. Uh, and then this little guy over here, uh, uh, uh. he sits right over, he slides over here, and uh, you're supposed to be able to take it on and off. Now, look at this. Unfortunately, <clears throat> um, I'm probably going to have to move my car so that I can take it off this way. Yeah, that's probably what I'm going to have to do. It's no big deal. I was hoping to just go straight that way. Anyway, let's do that, and, uh, and then we'll wire it up uh, to the console. Oh my God, you guys. Cavalier, whoever makes this company or whoever shipped this, I don't get it, I don't get it. So getting this off the pallet was unbelievably difficult. Not only uh, did I have to jack it up using multiple jack stands and floor jacks, excuse my language, the thing was bolted onto the pallet. So there we are trying to pull the thing off the pallet and the pallet's not moving. And we find out that it's because there are four massive bolts, nuts and bolts. Why would you bolt that to a pallet? I mean, like in transit, it's not like it's gonna move. It's so heavy, I mean, maybe. Oh, anyway, so we figured out that, yeah, we had to take off the bolts, then take the pallet out and then getting it on the ground. Now it's on the wheels and I can move it around, which is cool. But first, let's just move this around. <laughs> and you see the demolition that is, uh, is left in my garage. I need to now go and pick up all this wood, floor, uh, you know, the shop back it, and then I've got to get it into a position where I, I think I'm going to leave it for a while, uh, connect it up to the doodah over there, the console, and then get the car up and down. But so far, I've spent the most amount of time and effort and sweat with a very nice neighbor of mine across the road who uh, volunteered to lend a hand getting this thing off the pallet. Ridiculous, ridiculous. Anyway, let's get on with it.
So guys, I've reached a logical breaking point, which may or may not be the end of this video. I don't know when I'm in the edit, but um, the ramp is done. The ramp is in position. The car manages to fit over it just fine. A uh, couple of things that I'm thinking of, and I'm going to need to go away and just do a little bit more research and uh, maybe do a little bit more configuration before I start to try and raise the car. So let's talk about those. First off, um, I've got the ramp in a decent position in terms of uh, its, its width in its position left to right in the garage. I've got, you know, work around. I've got space around this side of the car, that side of the car. My wife's car can still come in and out. I'm sort of physically and technically within the third bay, according to the tiles, which is great. Um, the trick is to maybe move it forward another foot. I've got sort of two foot, maybe two and a half in the front of the car, um, but I'm right up on the bikes. So I think one thing I'll, I'll have to do is mount the bikes flat on top of each other on the wall, which is super simple to do. Um, but I will push the ramp forward uh, maybe a foot. And again, that's really easy to do with the dolly now that I've got that figured out. So that's that. Um, unfortunately, the car is too low to the ground for me to use the big, thick rubber blocks that came with the, uh, the system. Uh, but the hockey puck works, the Porsche hockey puck. So I need three more of those to sit underneath the car, uh, and then I'll be able to take it up and down as often as I like. Now, the challenge I've got is that I can't actually get the lift to activate. The power is on. Uh, the electrics are connected up just fine. I'm able to turn the safety off. I've got the green light. It's in parked position right now. And it's all the way on the floor. But when I push the up button, the motor runs, but I get no movement. And I'm guessing that's because um, there was some hydraulic fluid that leaked in transport. And, you know, I had to clean it up with Luke earlier. So I'm going to let it settle for a little while and see if that's the problem. Uh, or maybe there's a flush, or, you know, like sort of a siphon or something that I need to do to get the fluid into, uh, into the pipes. I'm not sure, uh, or I might have to go and buy some hydraulic fluid and just top up the tank, and there's an access point in the front. So a little bit more research is needed there before I can get it off the ground. But what do you think? This is a good start, I think, uh, at least for a couple of years while I tinker and work on the car. And if I decide to get a project car in the future, then I can sell this and swap it out. But right now, I'm super happy with it. So stage one complete, stage two is now to try and get the car actually off the ground. So hit me up in the comments below, let me know what you think, and uh, let's keep going.